In this review, we're going to be talking about Webinar Ninja 6. What are its webinar presentation tools, audience interaction tools, and how well can you build and run your live or automated webinars? And is it actually worth the price? Let's have a look. So when you go into Webinar Ninja, there are multiple types of webinars that you can host. And the most common one is the live webinar, which would happen at a specific date and time. The second type of webinar is the automated webinar, which basically means that you upload a pre-recorded webinar recording uh, or a YouTube video and it would launch at a specific time. You can schedule it to happen every week or every day or even multiple times per day. So for example, you can set it up to happen at every hour. So whenever a visitor arrives at your webinar landing page, they would see that the webinar is just about to happen all the time. Or you can actually schedule it uh, that the web webinar is readily available right when they arrive there. There's also a webinar series, which would mean that your attendees sign up once for the webinar, but then they would get access to the consecutive webinars that would happen in that series. And also the hybrid webinars, which is basically automated webinars, you wouldn't be presenting, you would present, you would basically launch your uh, pre-recorded webinar recording, but you would be there in the webinar, chatting with the attendees, answering the questions and so on. So a hybrid webinar is essentially a automated webinar, but with the live interaction elements in there. One of the key aspects to consider is how well designed and how customizable are the webinar landing pages. This will determine how well will you be able to convert your visitors into actual webinar attendees. On Webinar Ninja, there are four different templates you can choose from. This is a minimalistic one, just straight to the, straight to the point, register here, uh, here's the time, register, go ahead. Then there's the detailed uh, registration page, which gives you the option to kind of customize and put some bullet points here to kind of make it more attractive and uh, write a uh, bio about the author. Then there is the, this type of uh, template where you can present your kind of product image or your own author image or whatever, similar to the one before, uh, but instead of the image, you can insert a video, like an intro video or like an attractive kind of call to action, which uh, makes your visitors to go ahead and register. For each of those uh, registration page templates, you can actually choose the background image from a gallery, upload uh, your own image, and there are tons of like beautiful kind of images that you can choose from. I'm gonna choose the one with uh, uh, this one, and you can choose the kind of uh, the layout colors and the button colors, so you can make it more kind of match with your brand and your brand colors. You can add your logo and stuff like that. A new feature that came with Webinar Ninja 6 is that you can customize your registration form, meaning that you can add custom questions and you can kind of rearrange them and make some of them just required. So after your uh, visitor has signed up for the webinar, they will be redirected to the thank you page. So this is basically a page that says, okay, this uh, webinar is happening at that time, add this to your calendar. So this is an important part. If um, they add it to their calendar, it's going to be happening in a few days, then it's more likely that they will attend once the webinar is in their calendars. On the topic of maximizing your webinar attendance rate, Webinar Ninja has automatically set up multiple webinar reminder emails that will be reminding your attendees that, hey, the webinar is happening in so or so days or hours. For each webinar that you set up in Webinar Ninja, there will be eight different emails set up by default. The first one is just a registration confirmation sent right after the registration happens. Then one day before the webinar happens, three hours before the webinar, one hour before the webinar, and five minutes before the webinar happens. This is, uh, in some ways, this is a good thing because it keeps reminding that uh, your webinar is happening, that uh, the attendees signed up for it, so they will be anticipating it. But at the same time, you have to be careful not to get marked as spam if you send out uh, too many emails per, per each webinar. After the webinar has happened, there will be also two different emails. One to the people who actually registered but didn't attend, and one to the registrants who attended the webinar. Now, actually, you can add more emails or you can deactivate some of those uh, emails. Of course, if you have your email uh, management or, or your contact management in a third-party uh, email software, then you can, of course, integrate with that as well. 
To prepare yourself for a really smooth and fluid and successful webinar, you should be setting up your webinar presentation slides, your um, videos that you want to show, and basically all the materials that would uh, that you would use in presenting your webinar. And you would want to do that before the webinar. And this is actually something that has been significantly improved in Webinar Ninja 6. So intuitively, I wanted to um, set up the presentation tools in the options, but I see no such option. So what you actually have to do is go to the media library. So I've noticed that some navigation parts in Webinar Ninja 6 is quite unintuitive in some, part, in some parts. So something you have to get used to. In this media library, you would upload all your uh, media, your presentation slides, your videos, your images, your handouts, everything, all the materials you would want to use during your webinar. So to see how those uh, webinar presentation tools, your slides and everything would look like, uh, you would have to enter the studio. As you're entering the studio, you can uh, set up the technical settings, the, the input uh, devices, uh, some, of the, some of the kind of uh, interaction settings and you can also test your basically internet speed and connection. So this would give you a quality score and uh, for your video and for your audio. So you would, uh, you would know if you need to adjust something or, or kill some apps before you go live. So as you're in the webinar studio, you can go ahead and uh, insert your slides from that media library that you have uploaded uh, previously and uh, those will be ready uh, when your webinar starts. As an attendee, uh, this is how I would see the webinar registration page. I would go to register, there will be a pop-up where I would enter my details. As a host, I'm in the webinar room and that uh, the webinar uh, time has actually been reached. Now, before I start the webinar, I uh, could have set up the polls and the, uh, the offers, the, ha the handout files that I would uh, share at any point during the webinar. Now, these interaction tools, this is something that has been significantly improved in Webinar Ninja 6, the new version. So let's see how setting those interaction tools would look like for the host and how they would appear for the attendees. I'm just now starting the web webinar broadcast and my webinar has started. Uh, actually, just right off the bat, I've uh, set up a poll for my attendees and I'm going to just uh, save that poll and it's basically ready. It's not active uh, and I can just at any time during the webinar make this poll active. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this now. As an attendee, this is how I would see that uh, something has been uh, launched. I can see that uh, the host has uh, launched a poll. So I'm just gonna go to the poll. It will redirect me as an attendee to the different tab and I can make my vote here. And also I can set up any handouts uh, that I would uh, want to launch to my attendees. Again, as an attendee, I would see that um, the host has shared the photography uh, tips and tricks handout file, so I can just navigate to that right here. So this makes it really like um, apparent what's happening with the, the kind of interactions and they're reflected in the chat. So of course the attendees uh, can uh, chat as well. Uh, there's quite like emoticons and stuff like that. A slight downside here is that if there's a lot of chat going on, then the shared files notifications here can, can get quite a bit lost. So in these senses, uh, the host can draw attention that, hey, attendees, go to the handouts tab and you can see the, the handouts are very clearly visible there or the polls. So the live webinar offers are one of the most important bits of your entire webinar if your focus is sell some courses or products. The offers here have a really quite uh, um, uh, flexible functionality. You can, you can um, customize the button, uh, the URL and the text and even add an image. So I've set this uh, offer up as a host now and I'm gonna save it. And again, with the same way, I can make this offer active at any time. As an attendee, again, I can see that uh, an offer has been launched and basically this is how the offer would be shown.
One thing that I like about Webinar Ninja is that as an attendee, I cannot close this offer. As an attendee, you can always access that offer. However, not all your attendees are going to be ready to just uh, jump on the offer. Uh, sometimes they have hesitations and questions and uh, so any attendee can ask questions and what I like about Webinar Ninja is that other attendees can vote on those questions. As a host, I'm seeing all those questions just categorized in uh, the Q&A tab and I can order them by votes. The most desirable questions are ranked at the top so I can just uh, start answering them in the, the right order. Just a few words about the presentation tools. In Webinar Ninja 6, uh, it's been significantly improved. What you can now do is navigate between the slides. You can preview next slide. So as a host, you can prepare your uh, presentation in a way that it will be a smooth transition to the next slide. What you can also do is change the layout. And what you can do is you can maximize the, the webcam feed or you can maximize the, the slides. So what it enables you to do is emphasize your talking points to your attendees uh, at the right time so you can direct their focus in that way. So in this view right here as an attendee, I can see the slides and the webcam feed and the share screen. However, one downside that I'm seeing as an attendee is the shared screen is kind of flickering. So this is definitely something that the Webinar Ninja can still improve. Now, just as the webinar has ended, it will prompt me to view the statistics. So let's look at the webinar stats. Okay, there's definitely a bad impression over here, but let's look at it. So what it gives me is the unique visitors, how many registrants were there. So Webinar Ninja 6 has actually significantly improved the webinar analytics dashboard, which is an important place to look at when you are looking to improve on your next webinars. For example, the registration page conversions, how well are the visitors converting to actual uh, registered attendees. The second thing is the webinar attendance rate. How many of those registered attendees are actually converting to your webinar, uh, to watching your webinar? And also the, the webinar attendance duration. What are you saying and doing on your webinar that causes maybe uh, peaks of attention or maybe causes uh, people to leave your webinar? So this is important to learn. Also engagement with the interaction tools. Are they engaging in the polls? Are they engaging with the offer? And Ultimately, the offer is the, the quite the, the most important part of your webinar um, in converting it to a sale. So the analytics dashboard helps you to understand each and every step along this uh, the, the funnel and improve on each of those steps. So let's talk money. Is Webinar Ninja 6 actually worth it? Considering the significant improvements they've done on the presentation tools and the interaction tools with the current price point is one of the best kind of bank per buck webinar platforms you can uh, get your hands on. For just $49 per month, you can get up to 100 live attendees, unlimited recording sessions. If you just go a little bit more uh, to the pro plan, you can get automated webinars with that as well, as well as the webinar series. So there's room for scaling. If you're just starting with live webinars, that's fine. And for each of those plans, there is a 14 day free trial. In conclusion, if you are looking for a webinar platform for live webinars and potentially automated webinars that have really decent um, presentation tools, engaging audience interactions and insightful analytics dashboard, and if you're looking at, at the nice price point as well, then definitely Webinar Ninja 6 is one of the best choices you can make. But since it has a 14 day trial, you should check it out if it matches your needs, if it enables you to customize everything as you would like, then check out the link in the description. If you use the link uh, to sign up, then you would be supporting me in making more of these kind of detailed review videos. So thank you for watching and have a great time.